Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. I'm Kevin. Today I'm joined by Mochi, I'm joined by my girlfriend Diane, and my brother Justin. We're heading out to the intertidal zone, doing a little bit of foraging. First, we're going to start in the back of the bay. We'll go for some steamer clams like these guys. Got them in the refrigerator right here. And then we're headed out to the rocky open coast intertidal. See what we can find. Side left. Today's adventure begins in the calm waters of the back of a bay and marks the end of the bivalve shellfish quarantine for the majority of the state of California. Here we go. Here you can see each individual steamer clam being measured to be sure that it is at least one and a half inches at its widest point. You're legally allowed 50 per person per day. Nice one, man. Got a good spot there. Bam. There we go. Just kind of gently raking through, and anytime you see what looks like a clam starting to pop out, you want to test it. That way, if it's like that, where it's just under, you can put it aside and it won't get crushed. If it's just over, then you can throw it in your bucket. There's another one. So you gotta really be looking for that detail. That one's under two. So we'll leave those to the side so we can rebury them and it will stay sustainable. Yeah, overall, so many less clams this time than I've ever seen out here. Filling in my hole. Why are you doing that? Because I'm not a dick. <laughs> We want to make sure that they survive, the young ones, right? That way we can keep coming back. Yeah. Have you seen less clams this time than normal? Yeah. By like how much you think? 70%. 70% less than normal? I think so. I think so too. Yeah. It's pretty sad. Yeah. So this is kind of extremely important what you're showing people that they got to rebury their holes, huh? Okay. All right, folks, we're moving locations. We're going from the back of the bay to the open, rocky coast to forage for an entirely different suite of species. Let's go. That is so awesome. Yes. That's a lion's mane, baby. Edible, incredible. Let's go. Welcome to my office. <laughs> Let's go have a look. It's pretty cool. California red abalone shell. So this is an anemone. You can see how it reacts when I poke it. These guys, they, they open up like a flower in the water and then if there's any kind of crab walking by, they'll grab a hold of it and just bring it in and then they digest it inside here. So yeah, they're pretty cool. Very, very pretty. Um, I'll show you what they look like underwater here in a second. But yeah, at this time they kind of close up to protect themselves. An anemone looks like that when it's all open. Super pretty. Down here, you can see there's a beautiful little sea star. Always nice to see, we need more of those. Sea stars are what keep our urchin population at bay, especially the giant sun stars, which we're not really finding these days. They used to be all over the place. Oh, you can see that little bit of purple down in there. That's a sea urchin. Just a baby, keep looking. 
Another abalone, another sea star, another abalone, another anemone. So my brother just got a, a huge haul. Check this out. Purple urchins and um, mussels. Took like two minutes. <laughs> when the tide is low, there's lots to be had. <laughs> anyway, that bit of blue right there, that is a dive weight. I'm gonna grab that. So, <clears throat> this is actually one of the strongest adhesives in nature that, that the muscle uses to fuse itself to the rock. We call these little tassels the beard. We'll want to get rid of the beard before we eat it, but right now it's in its perfect little package with the perfect amount of sea brine. And it's going in the bucket. Legally in California, you have to use your hands. You can't use any tools to get these things loose. So people will sometimes see us doing this. And they're like, oh, you should use a screwdriver or a crowbar. We're not allowed to do that. So let's use our hands and you can see it's not very good. They're super tasty. And uh, every year when we do this, when I start planning a, an event around a low tide, I will call ahead of time, make sure that the biotoxin information hotline says that the county I'm in is good to go. Right now, it's safe to harvest these in the county where we are, but up in uh, Humboldt right now and Del Norte, I think it's still in quarantine. So I always call a couple weeks ahead of time, a couple days ahead of time, and then I call the morning of. That way I make sure that if there's any last minute closures that we're not getting potentially poisonous shellfish because those biotoxins, they don't get destroyed if you cook them. So be sure ahead of time otherwise you can eat mussels think you're getting something delicious and it kills you or causes amnesia or paralysis I think your very very best scenario would be you would poop your brains out and if your best scenario is you pooping your brains out that sounds like a really bad decision <laughs> so that's a limpet nice little mollusk very very tasty throw that in there we're allowed 35 a day Right down in here, got some tegula. You can see the meat sticking out of it. So I'm gonna grab some of these and then we'll head back and do some cooking. On the way over here, we found this. This is a lion's mane. This is one of my favorite edible species of fungi. And uh, yeah, I don't know, we were driving along, I looked over at the side of this dead oak and I was like, what? That's, I know for sure that's an edible species. So we didn't really get a chance to talk about it much. Hi Mochi, hi Mochi. But um, yeah, it's a tooth fungus, as you can see. Got a very interesting uh, texture, very interesting character, but um, it is very easy to identify. It loves, <laughs> hi puppy. It loves growing on uh, old oaks and things like that. And uh, today we're gonna saute up a little bit of it and then we'll cook it with our seafood. So my brother's making a bow drill kit from some driftwood right now. He's gonna carve it down and we're gonna try and rub sticks together, cook our shellfish the old way on an open fire. Oh, it's smoking though, huh? Yep. Yes. Nice work, dude. Thanks. Just driftwood you found on the beach. Yep. Heck yeah, man. Boom. Nicely done, bro. Nicely done. Nothing but driftwood and grass. Heck yeah, man. Bushcraft, baby! <laughs> well, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but there's no kindling. <laughs> I'm on it. That's a beautiful fire, dude. Thanks. You've done good. 
So now we're gonna steam some shellfish, but do you need an appetizer? Should we just throw some mussels right in those coals? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I need an appetizer too. How about you? She does. Alright, let's go check on the refrigerator. There we go. You see our oh that's super cool. This little guy right there in the center is starting to bury itself under the sand again. And you can see these little guys, they're tiny hermit crabs and they're starting to try to eat the one that we cracked when we were digging. But yeah, you can see these guys are kind of trying to avoid predation here in the inner tidal where they're not supposed to be. So anyway, we're going to get all these little hermit crabs off of these guys and we're going to cook them. Mm-mm-mm. Good uni. Ooh. Ooh. Uni. Perfectly cooked here. Yeah. What do you think? It's good. Good? Yeah, real good. Nice. All right. Trying to juggle the camera. Burning hot shells. Oh. Some beautiful California mussels. Mmm. Mmm. Dude, it is worth the wait all year. God, I love mussels. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I'm gonna cut up some garlic, make some garlic bread. Totally forgot my cutting board. And Diane's getting some firewood. And we're gonna start cooking up this pot of delicious shellfish. Mm, mm, mm. We're gonna give some of this uni a taste test. See that good color, nice and yellow, healthy. Diane says it's very sweet. That's good. And get this little spine out of there. Get a good chunk of it. That is really good. I'm not a huge uni person, like I can't do it. <laughs> every day or anything but every once in a while yeah that's really good yeah. no bitterness it's nice it's super sweet that's really good that's the best purple urchin i've had yeah that's the best uni i've had in a long time Ooh, maybe we gotta do another uni episode huh in the meantime garlic bread this right here. Yeah, once this gets down to coals, um, we put the shellfish on. I guess I should start preparing that. Got oh, like a half an hour before sunset, which means about an hour of light left. So I'm going to hope that we can have this cooked in about 15-20 minutes. Still have enough light to do a nice taste test and hike back on out of here. Salty. <laughs> is there a little seawater in there? No. Yeah. Was it good honey though? Yeah, it was like salty and sweet. You know the thing that kind of creeps me out though? The guts inside? No. Huh. The fact that these little thingies are still moving. Oh yeah. Well, that's because it's certified fresh. <laughs> oh yes. Here. No, you go for it, baby. No, there's more for me. What? It's totally good. All right, so I threw a little bit of the lion's mane in here, a little bit of butter, just some herbs, rosemary, thyme, sage, a couple pieces of onion, nothing fancy. You know what? We don't need to be fancy. Poke it around with a stick. <laughs> Remember, it is important to cook mushrooms. There are some that you can eat raw, but a lot of them, even morels, for instance, are delicious when they're not cooked. I mean, delicious when they're cooked, but when they're not cooked, they can make you sick. So, definitely cooking the lion's mane. All right, you guys want to try this? What is it? Lion's mane? Mm, it's good. 
We good? Yeah, it's real good. Best cup. Totally good texture. Nice flavor. Could use a little salt. I didn't salt it. Got some onion, some herbs, bay leaves. Throw a little old bay in there. And add some shellfish. And boom. How's it look? Lambs are open, mussels are open. Herbs look great. Let's do it. Then we got some garlic bread. Yeah, steaming hot. Oh boy, oh boy. Ooh, yeah. yeah, buddy. Coastal foraging, baby. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm gonna grab some garlic bread and dig in there. And uh, I'm going, I'm gonna go for one of those clams. Oh my gosh, the garlic smells so good. some regular water, about I think a quarter seawater to three quarters regular water and some old bay. Good. Oh yeah. Glad we did the garlic bread. we did this. Next time, make twice as much garlic bread. <laughs> yeah, if I had more time, I would have learned all about it. That's yours. That's a, it's okay. I also got that big piece of bread that you no, did. I'm we happy? Very good, man. Good. We brought forks, too. Oh yeah, about that. yeah, yeah. They came free with a burrito <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed, give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment. We always like hearing back from you. And until next time, keep the old ways alive. Oh, and by the way, let's do a giveaway. Leave us a comment. You have to be a subscriber. I'm going to leave this up for five days, so you have five days to enter. If you want to come out and forage with me, Leave a comment, let me know why, and I will choose one individual from all of those comments. Maybe we'll even do a video. Uh, you're gonna have to do that again, it was all crotch. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I don't know what that is!